Welcome to the Long Game Podcast. I'm your host, Sandra Scaiano. I'm super excited to bring you today's episode. We're talking about artificial intelligence or AI. It's something that we use every day. You know, do you ask your Alexa device or Siri questions? That's AI. Do you use Face ID on your phone? That's AI. Do you check out any of the recommendations that Netflix puts up for you? Again, that's AI. And shopping on Amazon is full of AI-created choices that are presented to you. Artificial intelligence has become such a part of our daily lives that we really only think about it when it comes to big, otherworldly projects like self-driving cars and such. But artificial intelligence can have a place for us small business owners and entrepreneurs. Today, we're diving into what is AI, some well-known brands that currently are using AI, and by proxy, how we are using it as their customers, and then some ways that you can use AI in your business. Now, there's two sides to the artificial intelligence coin, and you know, with some pretty strong opinions on each. So that's why this is going to be a two-parter. The long game is artificial intelligence and your business, part one. You're listening to The Long Game Podcast with Sandra Scaiano. In a world where everyone is doing, it's easy to get lost in a sea of comparison, secret tricks, and promises of overnight success. The Long Game is my approach to business, the actual day-in and day-out philosophy that you have to show up, you have to do the work, and there's no quick fixes for long-term success. I'm a web designer, digital strategist, and energetic thinker, and I'm here to share the process and lessons I experience with my clients daily who are going through the same struggles of building a business as you are. We'll hear from successful entrepreneurs sharing their long game strategies, and I'm fun, so we're going to have a little fun along the way too. Thanks for being here. Let's get to today's episode. Artificial intelligence. It's all around us and something we don't really think of unless it's super techie or a super invasive project. You know, whether we like it or not, AI is part of our world and it's fueling so many platforms that we interact with on the regular. You know, AI can be a controversial topic. There are staunch supporters and detractors, but it's not something that is going away. So, you know, It's time for us to start understanding this tech more and learning how and if we want to apply it in our businesses. All right, so let's start with the basics, right? Like what is AI? In short, AI is the process of creating intelligent machines and ones that can react and work like humans. And this can be done through a variety of methods, including machine learning, natural language processing, and robotic process automation. And businesses are particularly interested in AI because it has the potential to revolutionize nearly every industry. So for example, retail companies can use AI to create more personalized shopping experiences and healthcare organizations can use AI to improve patient care. And then in sports, the US Open is deep into AI with their partnership with IBM who is capturing and analyzing data for robust stats and commentary. And as the world continues to become more digital, it's clear that artificial intelligence is going to play a more increasingly important role. And, you know, there's really no one definition of artificial intelligence, you know, as it's this type of field that is constantly evolving. However, there are some general themes that underpin most AI work. And these include learning from data, which, you know, we get what this means, and reasoning probabilistically. You know, I'm already getting into some of these heady terms, but probabilistic reasoning is using logic and probability to handle uncertain situations. So this could be, when I mentioned the US Open, will a tennis player win their next match, right? And a third theme in AI is decision-making. So AI systems, they often need to be able to adapt to their behavior for these different situations that they're going to encounter, which means that they need to be able to learn and improve over time. 
And this is a point that's really intriguing about the use of AI, right? Because machines need to think, but it's also one of the most controversial points about artificial intelligence and really like taking it to the extreme, will the machines become smarter than humans and learn to control us? So, you know, that's seriously some sci-fi movie plot stuff come to life, but that's a possibility in moving in these directions, right? And all of this really does raise some ethical concerns though. Like who is controlling these machines? And are these learnings from the machines equitable? And this has already been raised by the use of AI in chatbot technology. So a recent uh, Mashable story was stating that Meta's new BlenderBot 3 AI chatbot, which was released on August 5th of 2022, is already making a host of false statements based on interactions it's had with real humans online. So chatbots, they learn how to interact by talking with the public. So Meta is encouraging adults to talk with their bot in order to help it learn to have natural conversations about a wide range of topics. But that means the chat bot can also learn misinformation from the public too. And in this case of this newly launched chat bot, it has learned, I quote, fake news and anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, among other items. So, <laughs> right. So artificial intelligence you know, it's already had a significant impact on our world, you know, and its importance is only going to grow in the future from here. And as the technology becomes more sophisticated, it's going to be increasingly used to automate tasks and make decisions in all of these different industries that we encounter on the daily, like healthcare and finance and transportation and manufacturing. So it's got this ability to improve efficiency, and productivity. So it can really transform our world in a powerful way. But it's got to start somewhere. And we're already well into its usage. And it's already being widely used by a number of corporations. Because those big businesses, they have or have had the money to develop this technology. So let's talk about some examples of how AI is already being used. So the futurist Bernard Marr has created a list of the 10 best examples of companies using artificial intelligence in practice. So I'm going to pull some examples from him and add in some other ones. So, you know, I mentioned in the show's intro, Amazon is a big user of AI with its Alexa application. Alexa is totally an AI application. You know, this is where it uses natural language processing as well as machine learning. And natural language processing is the ability for the machine to understand you speaking. It wants to be able to process what you're saying. And then the machine learning, it handles those queries to complete tasks, such as ordering products or managing your smart home devices. So when you say, and I'm going to use the Lexi term because mine's sitting on my desk here. Uh, when you ask Lexi to order a product from you, that is a total AI automated task. First, it needs to understand what you're saying so that it can order it. And then it needs to put that task into process so that something shows up at your doorstep. And Amazon is also using AI for product recommendations on amazon.com, as well as, as its new cashierless stores called Amazon Go. And here, AI tracks the items that customers are purchasing without the need for a checkout. So one of these Amazon Go stores just opened near me, and it's just pretty fascinating. So I know some people will say like, oh, they have so much information about you, you know, and they are tracking you. And totally, right? That is happening. They're tracking you at Amazon in the Amazon Go store, but they're also tracking you in the regular supermarket. And I've mentioned this before, how my local grocer not only has a club card, but gives further discounts if you are using their app. And then like in store, you use the app to scan products for further savings. And I can only imagine that they are tracking movements within the store. Like, ah, you're going from the ketchup aisle to the cereal aisle. What can we do to get you to buy more in between those movements, right? Like I get all riled up about this because, you know, using your club card, they are already tracking the products you purchase. So, you know, 
what is the point for them to scan products in the app for more savings, if not to track you further in the store? So, you know, when we talk about these things, like people tend to go, oh, I don't like that. But like, you're already doing some of that already and you don't even realize it. So, you know, all of this really is a personal decision for what your level of comfort with privacy is. And I am going to be doing a part two to this artificial intelligence series so that we can talk a little bit more about like the darker side of things and go into that. There's just so much information to share. So I had to break it up in two. So, all right, Amazon's using it in a number of ways. Another company employing AI is Uber. And according to analytic steps, Uber uses AI big time in their app for detecting frauds, evaluating risks, pairing drivers with riders, and optimizing the route. Like so many different ways that they're using this digital technology. And Uber also uses AI to properly match customer service inquiries with the most relevant agents. So you know, on a customer service level as well, we're getting used out of it. So of course, we all know that social media is ripe with AI, like algorithms are basically AI, right? So both Twitter and Facebook use AI to understand the tweets and posts that are being published from their platforms. And, you know, both of these platforms have thousands of posts being published every second. So relying on AI helps the platforms to monitor the text and images and really gives them the ability to red flag content, as well as use um, facial recognition to identify photos and remove those photos when necessary. So we're gonna talk more about this in part two because you know, so, so many of us bump up against like, hey, I didn't do anything wrong and I'm getting put in Facebook jail, right? So that's another piece where you know, AI shows that it isn't a perfect science yet. Okay, another brand that is using artificial intelligence is Netflix. And Analytic Steps also references that Netflix, it employs a carefully developed AI algorithm to recommend new content to its users, and it also collects data on its users. So this is really interesting to me because these are the things like we don't think about when we are using these platforms. So they collect the data of what you viewed, the time you viewed it, those type of things, so that they can predict the bandwidth usage and optimize streaming quality. So this is kind of like using our own information for good, right? Like we want to have a good, a good quality video output. So they are using our own habits and the habits of all their users so they can optimize the bandwidth. So better quality viewing based on when people are watching. And I can only imagine that during the pandemic, this was like crazy for them. Okay, so we're moving on to my all-time favorite sporting event, the US Open. And they have been going deep with AI and their partner, IBM. IBM has created this proprietary software called Watson, which I just love that name, so clever. And IBM is capturing over 7 million, capturing and analyzing over 7 million data points from scores and stats and serve speeds and so much more. And they use AI to process this information and provide all types of insights for the US Open. You know, they can even predict if a player is going to win their next match. And what's really cool is that IBM is pulling back the curtain a little bit and they are sharing the actual reasoning for Watson's conclusions in an effort called explainability. And it's really showing fans how AI is being used. So that's pretty cool. And, you know, the statistics that they are creating are building out content for the commentators to speak about and, you know, fans to enjoy. When you go onto the websites or when you follow the live matches, like there is so much information that they have and they're sharing and disseminating. So, you know, this is, I'm really just touching the surface of corporations that are using AI because of course, Google and Apple and Tesla and all the big and forward thinking tech companies are using forms of artificial intelligence. So, you know, we're in it, right? (laughs) We're using it, we're customers of those companies, you know, but 
Should we, as smaller businesses and entrepreneurs, be using AI for our businesses? And if so, what are the ways that we can infuse AI into our businesses responsibly? So for the size and shapes of the business owners who are listening here, you know, we're mostly connecting AI to our businesses through different software and applications that we're utilizing. Like we are not getting this technology and developing it on our own. That is way beyond our scope here. So let's talk about some ways that we can use it for our business. Obviously, number one, social media, right? You know, and since social media platforms employ AI, and as business owners, we use these to market our businesses and to connect with our audiences, it's important to follow the social media news so that you can make informed decisions about how we want to go about things. You know, it's such a double-edged sword with social, right? Like, We get access and connection, but we give up privacy and we give up control of our content reach, right? Even when we pay for services via advertising, like we have no control over that really because it is subject to the algorithms. And social advertising is another use of AI. So delivering targeted ads is based on data collection and predictability. So anyone who is doing any form of social ads, there is. AI for your business. Okay, and then there's some independent apps I want to talk about. You know, one of the big areas, like it's just been a big breakthrough in the industry is copywriting. You know, that's really a way that small businesses can utilize artificial intelligence. And like personally, I was always like, eh, (laughs) about AI copywriting until one of my clients started using one to help write emails. And you know, they were pretty good emails. So I started snooping into the industry and settled on giving Jasper.ai a try. So Jasper is a artificial intelligence trained to write original creative content. And they have consulted with the world's best SEO and direct response marketing experts to teach their platform how to write blog articles, social media posts, website copy, all kinds of uh, different pieces that small businesses and entrepreneurs need. And, you know, you can, uh, you know, get a bit from the free trial, but, you know, you really have to give this a shot over time. And at this time of recording, I think it's like $49 a month. So I signed up for a paid account and, you know, just to really check it out more. And using Jasper is basically based on your input. You've got to input your themes and keywords to get a copy output. And then you've got to tweak and update to get varied outputs. You know, it's really interesting. And for those of you who hate the blank page, AI copy can really give you a great head start. In part two, I'm really going to dive more into some of the specifics of using that platform and some of the pros and cons of using that platform or any copywriting platform. So, another AI area that Jasper recently released is in artificial intelligence imagery. So it's the same premise of adding in themes and keywords and you know really descriptive specifics about what you want your image to look like. And you know <laughs> a lot of those images come out like looking very digital and they have weird eyes or weird hands and you know but as people get used to working with this technology, you know and they refine this, you know it can really be a game changer. I saw one sample done using Jasper's AI for images technology that was of models. And literally this little photo shoot layout thing could have come straight out of the pages of Vogue. Like as a photographer and a digital creator, I could not tell the difference between their digital imagery and a real magazine photo shoot. You know, the images, they just looked so real. And you know, that is providing some real opportunity for business owners. And again, it's a weird line to walk. So we're gonna talk more about that in part two as well. So another area where business owners can use AI for themselves is, you know, so many business owners use sales platforms like Etsy to sell their wares. And Etsy sellers have generated over 13 billion of gross merchandise sales on its platform in 2021. And that is from Etsy itself. 
reporting. And, you know, be it digital products or printables or artisan crafted items, you know, from party decorations or even graphic design services, platforms like Etsy are ways that we can lean on AI tech. Since products on Etsy aren't mass produced, SKU numbers, SKU numbers, aren't a way of cataloging here. So Etsy has really heavily invested in AI for its search platform algorithm, which is like helping link buyers and products and really making sales for the creators on its platform. So choosing a platform for its investment in technology is something smart that you can do as a business owner. You know, it's a smart business decision to figure out who's investing in what technology and how that's going to help you make sales. You know, the more you understand about how all of this works, the better you can understand the algorithms that power the apps and the platforms that we as entrepreneurs are leaning on to run our businesses. You know, and we're in a very interesting position because we aren't investing in the technology ourselves per se. You know, we are choosing these tools and these partners that are investing in artificial intelligence technology to fuel our missions and to fuel our sales. So this is exactly why we need to dive in and understand these concepts. You know, this understanding helps us make better decisions for our businesses. And this understanding takes us out of the void and into what is now and what is next. You know, it's the ultimate concept of leaning on our tech. But this technology, it doesn't come without its concerns. And, you know, there are ethical decisions you make in playing with or utilizing this technology, even as small business owners. So, you know, I've mentioned it a few times throughout this episode, but in part two, we're really going to go into the darker side of AI and, you know, the businesses that you choose to cozy up to and really what's going on and what are the possibilities going forward there. So. I'm so glad that you are here listening and that we can connect on these topics. Like I have spent so much time digging into this because it is just a genuine interest of mine. You know, so if you're interested and you want to know more or you have questions, like comment on one of my social AI threads, or you can always DM me on Instagram or Facebook with your artificial intelligence questions. Like I want to dig more into this because it is really driving everything that we're doing. And, you know, I'd love to follow up more and chat about this, like who we are, what we believe, and how can we get there when it comes to technology. All right. So be sure to listen to part two and have a great week, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more info in the show notes at thelonggamepodcast.net. If today's show connected with you in some way, please share it with your friends or hop on iTunes and leave me a review. Until next time, keep playing the long game.